In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make an enemy that chases the player, and if the player moves, then they start chasing it at that new location. So let's go. First, let's create a main scene, new 2D scene. Let's name this main. Let's attach a navigation region 2D. This is how we outline where the player is able to walk. So make sure you're on the mouse tool and have the plus sign selected. You can draw out where they can walk. I'm going to do the four corners here. Go ahead and create that polygon. Then you can click Bake Navigation Polygon. Now this means that whatever has a navigation agent can walk anywhere, but we want to add some walls. So click on the main scene again and attach an empty node 2D. This is going to hold our walls, so let's name it that. Attach a static body 2D. You'll get the error, and this means that we have to attach a collision shape. So we can do that as well. So with the static body 2D selected, attach a collision shape 2D. Click on the static body again, and we can also attach a sprite 2D. I'm going to import a wall and enemy and player sprite, but you can use whatever you want for your project. All right, I've dragged in my textures I'm going to use here. So with the wall sprite selected, I'll drag the wall onto that. We want to move the wall static body with the collision shape. In my case, I'll add a rectangle. You can hold Alt to make it change uniformly. Now I'll select the static body again and use the scale tool. The hotkey is S. I'll drag this out. Now if we duplicate this wall here, that's Control D, and move this using the move tool. One issue you might run into if you select the collision shape, you'll see it's still adjusting the first collision shape. To fix that, you can erase the shape on the new wall and just add a new one. And we can freely adjust this. And if you want, you can make this one more vertical. I have the second wall selected. Go back to the scale tool and change it to be more like this shape. Currently, our navigation region doesn't know about these walls. To fix that, drag the walls into the navigation region 2D so that it's a child of the navigation region. Now, if you click the navigation region 2D and you click bake, you'll see now it recognizes these and it has a small outline around those. So now it recognizes that these are walls. Let's add in a new scene for the enemy. This is going to be a character body 2D. Now attach the sprite 2D, then click the character body again, and let's attach the collision shape 2D. And one more time, we can click the character body, and we want to attach a navigation agent 2D. This is what lets the enemy actually use that navigation region that we set up. Let's name this enemy. Drag our enemy sprite. Again, you can use whatever you want for yours. Now go to the collision shape. I'll use a circle since that's relatively the shape of my enemy. Now let's attach a script to the enemy. We can name it enemy. We can remove a lot of this default code here. So I'm going to remove jump velocity and gravity from the top. And in physics process, let's only keep move and slide. Here's a trick you can do. Click on navigation agent 2D and drag it over, and before you release, start holding control, and then release, and now it adds in all of this for us. We can rename the navigation agent to not have this 2D part at the end, because we know it's 2D. Next, let's add a variable for what this enemy is supposed to chase after. It's going to be the player, but maybe you want to use this code for something else. So let's say at export var target to chase. That's going to be a character body 2D of some kind. And this is going to be set in the editor later. Now in physics process, above move and slide, let's set the target that the navigation agent is supposed to chase after. We're going to use target to chase. So let's say navigation agent dot target position is equal to target to chase. And we want the global position of that. Now let's set our velocity. Remember that's a built-in variable for a character body 2D. So we can say velocity is equal to our global position dot direction to. Direction to it normalizes a vector. What that means is whether the vector was 200 pixels long or just 20, it's going to standardize the length. So we can use that here. We want to know the direction towards the next position that this navigation agent is supposed to go to. So we'll say navigation agent dot get next path position. So our navigation agent has tracked a path, and we want to get the next spot in that path. And remember, this got normalized, so we need to multiply that times our speed. 
I personally prefer a speed of 180 for the enemy, but you can change it how you see fit. Let's go ahead and save this enemy. I'll leave the default location. Let's go ahead and make a player as well. I'm going to add a new scene. This is going to be a character body 2D. Let's attach a sprite 2D and also attach to the character body a collision shape 2D. Go back to 2D scene view. I'm going to attach my player icon to the sprite 2D. Let's add a collision shape. Let's name this to be player and save it. I'll use the default location. Back in the main scene, I'm going to attach the enemy to main and also the player to main. My sprites might be a little large here, so I can scale them using the scale tool. You can hold shift to make it scale uniformly. So I'm going to move my player up here and the enemy scale that down a bit. And I'll move them using the move tool to down here. This might be kind of a tight fit. Let's see if the enemy can fit through. I'll save this main scene. Select the enemy. At the top, where we have target to chase, drag over the player into that box. Now we can try running this. Oh, looks like he's trying to fit through there, but it doesn't quite work. Instead, let's widen the gap here. So I'll select the first wall, use the move tool to move it over a bit. Then we can rebake the navigation region. Let's try it now. Oh, you'll see he's kind of hugging the wall here. We can fix that. And also he collides with our player. Let's fix these issues. So one thing at a time. Let's go into our enemy in our navigation agent for path post-processing. Set that to be edge-centered. He is currently, he's colliding with the wall. We don't really want that. Next, click the enemy. Let's set the layer of the enemy to be on layer 2 but it's going to collide with layer 1. That's where our walls are. Let's also change that for the player. Back in our player scene, we can set it to be on layer 2. Let's run this now to see what happens. Yep, that looks better, but he's still kind of jittering when he gets to the end. And also we get this bug in the debugger. Let's fix both of those. So I'm going to stop the game. Back in our script tab for the enemy, the reason that we get this bug in the console Basically, it's trying to navigate before the navigation server is set up, and the navigation server is what the navigation region runs on, so let's just wait for it to be set up before we try to calculate where to go. Below where we have the speed variable, set up the func underscore ready function. At first, when this object loads, let's turn off physics processing. So we can say set physics process to be false. Below here, let's make a function to wait for the physics. So wait for physics. What we can use is the await keyword, so we can wait for physics to happen once. That means that the server has gotten set up. So we can say get tree dot physics frame. Now, once we've confirmed that the physics has happened for one frame, then we can set the physics process on again. So we'll say set physics process to be true. We have to actually call this function. Since the order that things are set up in ready is not that well defined, we can use call deferred. This is basically going to wait until it's ready to be called. Inside of the quotes here, we want to use the name of the function that we set up down here, which was a wait for physics. I'm going to copy paste that in. That should fix the bug in our console when we run the game. And yep, no bug. But we still jitter when we reach the target. To fix the jittering, we can go inside of physics process. We can check if our navigation agent is finished or not. So if navigation agent dot is navigation finished, then we can say return. But if we do that, then that's going to make it so that if we move the player, then he's not going to be chased anymore. To fix that, we can check if we've already reached them. So we can say and, because this line's kind of long, I'm going to use a backslash and go to the next line. We can check if the target to chase, if their global position is already equal to our navigation agent's target position navigation agent dot target position then we've already reached the target in that case but if the player moved then it's going oh you're not at your target so you need to keep searching for him let's try this now if he reaches the player and while i leave the game running here if i move the player over here and go back into the game you can see he still gets chased and no jitter if you have any questions or suggestions, then leave them down below and join the Discord. Other than that, thanks for watching.